Hi, is your teenager struggling with some anxiety about going back to school? And on top of that, is that social anxiety getting so bad that you're really worried that he or she won't be able to acclimate back into school face-to-face -face contact when that happens? Well, that's today's question on Tips on Teens. My name is Kent Toussaint. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and, I'm, and I specialize in helping kids, teens, and families live happier lives. I lead two organizations, Teen Therapy Center, which is a group private practice, and the nonprofit organization, Child and Teen Counseling, both here in Woodland Hills, California. Every Wednesday at noon, I come to you on Facebook Live to answer your parenting questions. The only difference today is I'm also helping to post this on another organization site that I'm involved with called Insight to Teen Culture. Insight to Teen Culture is a group of dedicated professionals who collaborate on supporting tweens, teens, young adults, and their families. Links for all organizations are down below. Please give them a visit. We really like helping people. Anyways, every Wednesday at noon, I come to you in your Facebook Live. Let's answer today's parenting question. Let's turn the page around so I can see it. <laughs> I'm concerned about my daughter's well-being. She's 14 and has always had trouble socializing, but she's always wanted to have close friends. Her anxiety gets in the way and she self-isolates. Before quarantine, she was showing improvement, getting involved in activities, and we felt like we were making progress. Since quarantine, she's reverted back to being very isolated to the point she won't FaceTime with her friends, but she's very outgoing with texting and typing as long as her face isn't on video. She's going back to online learning, which has a lot of anxiety about because she doesn't want to share her face on video. My big concern is once we get back to going into the classroom in person, how do we help her interact face to face without having a panic attack? So it's funny because, well, not funny, it's just interesting. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of this in my practice right now. A lot of social anxiety, which has been amplified by the ease of the self isolation from quarantine. Kids have been able to lock themselves in the room, stay on their phones for 12, 14 hours a day, maybe even longer for some kids. And it's this safe little cocoon that feels safe. Of course, it turns into a prison, um, you know, because they lose that strength, and that resiliency of getting out and being in the world. It could be that kids have our time even going to the grocery store. And, you know, if you say, hey, go pick out oranges, they're terrified of picking out the wrong orange. Or if you go to, you know, pick up an order at a restaurant, they're terrified to give that order. Um, so it's important to have your kids have, you know, get your kids out. Now, you don't want to force it. Anxiety is a real thing. Fear is a real thing. Just telling them to get over it and say, ah, it's nothing, no big deal. Just do it. Just push through it. That's not really going to work. In fact, it's probably going to do the opposite and push your kid back farther into the corner. So there's a lot of things to do about this. Number one, talk to your kid. Better yet, listen to your kid. Ask some, some open-ended questions. How are you feeling? What are you concerned about? But don't judge her answers. If she says, I'm scared everyone's gonna laugh at me, and they're gonna joke at me, say so everyone's gonna think I'm stupid, and you might say, well, they're not gonna do that. that no, that, of course they're not gonna do that. That's not going to help. That all she's gonna feel is that you are dismissing her, and that you're pushing away her feelings that what her experience is is irrelevant to you and you don't get it, which is gonna make her feel more alone. Therefore, she's gonna isolate to protect herself from feeling alone if that makes sense. So whatever you can do, make that experience safe for her, where she feels comfortable, whether you know it's you guys are sitting on the couch and snuggling, whether she's sitting across from you, whatever is good for her. So really support her. Um, and also this may not be one conversation, this may be several conversations you're gonna have with her. Um, also, you know, it's important to help her talk through what is her experience? If she's going to be online and she has the camera off, how does she feel as opposed to having the camera on? What is the difference? And it may be that you need to have a therapist talk to her about this. And the reason why is because therapists don't tell your daughter to brush her teeth or put her shoes away or get ready on time. So the great thing about a therapist is we're not authority figures. We're able to connect with a kid on a way that parents can't. We also can't connect as a parent can either. So we're not replacing a parent. But what we can do is we can help a kid 
have that safe place where there's feeling of no judgment where they can talk through and then start challenging some of these negative intrusive thoughts. Other things you can do, get her involved. First of all, make sure that her sleep habits are healthy, her eating habits are relatively healthy, her physical activity is relatively healthy, and her creativity is healthy. If you have all of these four elements tapped into, she may be more equipped at dealing with some of the social anxiety. Exercise is a great way to deal with this. Breathing, you know, doing yoga is a great way to deal with anxiety. Um, the exercise is clinically proven to help anxiety. It helps. Um, it gets them out of the house. It gets the body moving. Sometimes the anxiety is because there's so much pent up energy, they don't know what to do with it. But going out for a walk or a bike ride or you know whatever it is helps whew, get that through it. Learn about meditation. Learn about breathing techniques. Breathing is really important because when we are anxious, we hold our breath or our breath gets really shallow. And if we learn how to breathe clearly, we're able to slow down our thoughts, think through things, things clearly. If we're not, we get stuck in our head and our, ra- our thoughts are racing so much, we can't think clearly. So possible therapy, healthy sleeping habits. Sleep is really important. We do it for a third of our life. It's really important. Healthy eating habits, healthy physical activity, whatever that is for you. Everyone's going to have a different idea of what physical activity is, but a healthy physical activity and some creativity where she's not being judged, not being criticized. If she does decide to write a poem or draw a picture or sculpt some clay and she shows it to you, don't tell her it's good or bad. Talk to her about her experience. What did she like about doing it? What does she think about it? Um, you don't want her relying on you to tell her if it's good or bad because it's not your place to tell her if it's good or bad. You know, you can thank her. Hey, thank you for sharing this with me. I really enjoy it when you share me, with me your art. I love listening to your poetry. That's different than you did a good job because the first way is I'm appreciating you and your efforts. The second is you, you met the bar and anxiety is all about never able to meet the bar. And if you say, well, this is good, but you didn't mention the same thing the last time, then maybe you're not liking what she did or maybe you're just not being honest. So if she says, well, is it good? Is it good? Tell me if it's good. Say, hey, I love when you share with me this stuff. Really, it's important. What do you think? How do you feel? So there's a lot of ways to approach this anxiety. And I think it's better to approach it now while we're still in quarantine. As we wait until when quarantine is over, whenever that is, I don't want it to be like, you know, this culture shock for her. I want her to be able to be able to have that smooth transition back into school when that happens. Anyways, thank you for tuning in. Again, my name is Kent Toussaint. I love answering your parenting questions. Keep emailing us your questions at tipsonteens at teen therapycenter.com or you can direct message us right here. We'd love to hear from you. Please go visit the websites for Teen Therapy Center, Challenging Counseling, and Insight to Teen Culture. We'd love to support you. And if you have any questions, let us know. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye.